everyone, my name is Chloe, and I started vlogging about a year ago. Tell me guys, have you ever heard of a mukbang? For those who haven't, it started in South Korea about 20 years ago. In short, a person sits in front of the camera and eats whatever is in front of them. I will say in advance that some Korean vloggers eat a lot. As for me, I've always liked to eat delicious food, and when I discovered mukbang or mukbang in Korea, finally I had found something worthwhile for myself. Now I'm going to make a living doing what I love most, eating. The first thing I did was to subscribe to the most popular broadcasters, you know, those who are engaged in producing the process of eating, and began to see what food is popular now, then went to the store to get a microphone. The prices for it were high. Wow, good thing I had some money set aside. But I knew that if my channel would grow, I could make some money from it. As I was checking the mic, a saleswoman asked me what it was for. And then she found out. She liked the concept. She said it was very cool, because you had to put a lot into the channel, especially a gimmick. A gimmick? Why? I asked her, and she laughed and said that if I was just munching in front of the camera, it would be no use. I need to come up with my own style a so-called gimmick to stand out among the other vloggers. But I had no idea what kind of gimmick to come up with. The saleswoman advised me to look through the vloggers again and study them. So I did. As it turned out, everyone had this special something, a unique selling point. Some had two people in the frame, some ate with an animal, some ate only steaks, and some only ate spicy noodles, or what is also called ramen with kimchi. What did I love? Most of all, I loved eating sweets. And yes, I had an idea. I'm going to be a creator who only eats desserts. And the first rule for a budding creator is to drink less liquids while eating so that it can fit more in. I set up my phone with a tripod, lighting, waited until the house was quiet with no people around, bought some sweet goodies, brownies and cake, candy, ice cream and chocolate, and proceeded to eat. I talk about desserts in my country with whispers. It's popular. Left subtitles for the video. To tell you the truth, it is very difficult to eat in front of the camera because you have to hold your posture, chew nicely so as to not accidentally touch or smear the camera. I ate so much cake. Hmm, I overestimated my abilities. What a shame, but I kept eating. What kind of blogger am I if I didn't eat everything I showed the audience? And the first video went off without a hitch. After hours, I did it, and for good reason as it turned out. So I gradually started filming three times a week trying to buy unrepeatable foods to make it interesting. But behind the scenes, things were not going well. After each shoot, my stomach was so sore from the pain that I couldn't stand up. I had to take medicine to recover. Apparently, it was a shock to my stomach. After about a month, the pains went away. I began to feel normal. The views, as well as subscribers, increased, which I was very happy about. Don't think it was smooth sailing all along. Do you know how many times I had to exercise not to burp? because cutting it out was so annoying. And I also realized that I was chewing slowly. And I began to rush, eating large chunks, and only then I realized that I could just slightly speed up the video. That's all. During my blogging time, I had tried over a hundred different sweets. My mouth has experienced an incredible amount of candy. Now I know for sure that it's not a good idea to wash down cake with milk. Personally, I get heartburns afterwards, and I start belching. In general, everything can be cut. But the more I made, the more lazy I was to edit it. So I started getting a paid software that automates the process. And over time, I finally got money. After about a few months, I was already hosting streams, answering subscribers' questions. It was so cool. And then quietly, summer came. During this time, I almost never went out with friends, except very rarely. And then one day, my friends and I decided to have a pool party. I pulled out my bathing suit and just fell into a stepper. It was too small for me. My belly was hanging down my sides. Was there cellulite on my thighs and third chin? Where did this all come from? I was so shocked by my body, as if I was seeing it for the first time. And I was. Summer had just arrived and I had so many extra pounds. I despaired. I cried bitterly. Of course, I didn't go to the party. I didn't want people to see me with my figure. I sat down behind the camera and started recording another dessert video. And while I was recording, my microphone broke. Just what I needed, I yelled and threw my microphone on the floor. Then I decided I'd rather go on air and chat with my subscribers, try to relax. 
So, while I was eating pie, answering questions, getting lots of comments, my phone suddenly dropped. Previously, I was only showing myself up to my shoulders in the camera. Well, why the rest? But my phone fell weirdly, and the camera got my fat legs, chin, and I was still sitting in shorts. And in general, the comments about my figure immediately began pouring in. I got so mad and yelled at my subscribers that they made me so fat and that I blamed them. You know, only someone who blogs puts so much effort into it and can understand my breakdown. But I didn't think about it at the time. I started crying and saying mean things and losing control. Before I knew it, my phone was off because my battery died. Two hours later, when I had a bucket of ice cream for sorrow, I pulled myself together and went back to the store where I bought the microphone and complained to the saleswoman about the quality of the equipment. She told me that it was the cheapest one, so it broke quickly. And then she asked me how my channel's going. I told it like it was, that I was so fat. She laughed and said that the popularity has its own price. And did you naively assume that the other bloggers didn't have problems with bellies, obesity, and baldness? Cause a third of the creator wears caps all the time. What do the others do? They run to the gym and eat nothing but broccoli and water for the rest of the time, is what she told me. I was shocked. Really? I didn't know. How did you get so much information? I asked her. And she told me that her sister also did ASMR eating. She was young and managed to stay on top for over five years. But she worked so hard on herself behind the scenes. Always exercising, running in the morning, drinking water. She didn't even party. And that still didn't save her. And if you stop taking care of yourself and keep eating, something terrible may happen, the saleswoman added. I wonder what happened? She died of stomach cancer. At first, it was just pain. Then the pain got worse. We thought it was all food, so she cut back on the quantities, gradually ate more greens, vegetables, and fruits, changed the format, but her audience didn't appreciate it. Just so you know, subscribers rarely like change. So that's when it all started. We found out late, and she kept blogging until the end, she said. I haven't gotten over it. I didn't realize that there were great sacrifices, and it really got to me. That same day, I wrote on my profile that I was sorry to hear about what happened, even though I had lost so many subscribers. I hadn't given up hope. It's time for change. Anyway, the very next day, I signed for a gym. I was assigned a whole program of exercise and a meal plan. Taking into account that I had to eat sweets only three times a week, I reduced the amount of sweets and opted for so-called health sweets. In spite of the fact that it was hard, I did it every day. I worked on myself, and then I had a genius idea. I decided to show the price of popularity, to record my exercise routine, what I eat on normal days, to talk about feelings and even emotions. I don't argue anymore. It took me a month, but I got more subscribers. There were a lot of heated discussions, even more than the first time. And what about my weight loss? No, I won't say that I became ripped in a week of training. I had to try for a few years to get back to my former shape. But then I decided not to stop there and continue to improve. By the way, I became friends with that girl from the hardware store. You might consider her my mentor. I don't know what I would do without her advice. Her name is Stacy. We talk a lot and sometimes I feature her in my videos. She treats me like a little sister and I understand why. If you liked the video, then please leave a like and comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe!